What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World and of course my tutorial series for the A10C Warthog continues now. What we're going to talk about today is probably the single most important thing you need to understand about working with the A10C, manipulating its sensors and using its weapons and basically being effective in this airplane. And that is the concept of sensor of interest, or SOI, sometimes pronounced as a word, soy, or sensor point of interest, SPI, or SPI for short. I'm going to be referring to them by soy and SPI for the most part uh, as we continue on here. Now, the reason why I say this is the single most important thing to understand and arguably the hardest thing to understand about the A10C is because this concept of soy and spi is how we manipulate our systems. It's how we manipulate all of our sensors. It's how we designate targets for our weapons, okay? So firstly, what I want to do is just demonstrate how we actually select our sensor of interest. So we're looking straight ahead here in the cockpit. You know we have the left side MFD over here, where my mouse is. We have the right side MFD over here, and we have the HUD in front. Now imagine for a second you're sitting in front of a computer, which I hope you actually are sitting in front of a computer right now, otherwise you're probably having a tough time watching this video or you're watching on a smartphone but um, imagine for a moment that you're sitting in front of a computer that has three monitors okay I have three monitors myself it's great highly recommend it going off on a tangent but imagine for a second that you have a computer with multiple monitors that's sort of like what we have here our MFD both left and right and our HUD are our monitors. They are our computer screens. And we need to somehow manipulate what's shown to us on these screens in order to basically do our job when we're up in the air. Drop weapons, drop warheads on foreheads, all of that good stuff. So how does it all work? Now, uh, right now on the left side MFD, I've got the TAD page, the tactical awareness display. And over here on the right MFD, I have the targeting pod currently. Full video on targeting pod coming later. How do we manipulate these sensors? Well, by default, your sensor of interest, when you first start the airplane up, is going to be the HUD, okay? We can select the sensor of interest to be either the left MFD, the right MFD, or the HUD. It can be any one of these three displays, okay? What does it mean when one of these displays is our sensor of interest? Sensor of interest is the sensor that we are currently controlling. So if we give it any additional commands from our HOTAS, they are going to go to the sensor of interest. So right now I have the HUD set as the sensor of interest and the way I know that the HUD is a sensor of interest, let me just zoom in on it here. Pause. It's a little hard to dis it's a little hard to see because of the taxiway line right here. But if you look very closely under this little uh, this letter M, you see a little star, a little asterisk. That tells me that the HUD is currently the sensor of interest or soy. Right now, the HUD is soy. Okay, you follow me so far? That star indicates soy on the HUD. If I make another sensor the sensor of interest right now, that star disappears, the HUD is no longer soy, okay? If I make it sensor of interest again, that HUD is now soy. How do we select the sensor of interest? How do we make our different sensors the soy? We do that with the Cooley switch. I briefly touched on this in the previous video, but we're going to go in depth here. The Cooley switch is how we manipulate what our sensors are showing us. So if you remember, I touched on the Cooley short commands, left and right, cycle the different pages on the MFDs. Okay. 
if we wanted to say make the left side MFD, which is currently, if you look, I'm gonna zoom in and pause the camera, boom. This is the tad page on the left side MFD. You see the letters or the word here, not soy. That is telling us in big, bold, unmistakable terms that this sensor is not the sensor of interest. I have just made it the sensor of interest. How did I do that? I did it with the Cooley switch long command. And in this case, since this MFD is on the left, I made the tad page my sensor of interest by doing Cooley left long. That is press and hold. Now you can see that the words not soy have disappeared. And we also have a green box that's sort of bordering the sensor window. You see that there? That green box indicates that that sensor is soy. Now that is in contrast with the HUD. When the HUD is soy, you only get this green star. That's one difference you have to keep in mind and that's a difference that may confuse you early on when you're manipulating sensors. So let's just make our tad page soy again. Pause the camera. Now that this sensor is soy, I can do things to it. So if I use my slew control, like I mentioned before, I'm moving my little cursor around. If I, let me just turn the moving map on so you can see. I'm using my DMS, my data management switch, aft and forward to zoom in and out on the map. And there are other functions as well that you can do now that this sensor is soy. I'll have a bit more of an advanced video on the TAD, so don't worry about that. Let's turn the map back off and look more towards the center. Get the targeting pod up on my right side. Now let's say I was working with the TAD and now I want to work with the targeting pod, which is currently over here. Let me pause. Okay. Again, just as before, we see not soy and we don't have the green box. Since this is the right side MFD, what we then need to do, coolly right long. Now not soy has disappeared. We now have the green box bordering the window. I can now take my slew control. And as you can see, I can move my targeting pod around. I can also use my DMS, my data management switch to zoom the targeting pod in or my China hat to change the FOV. Again, I'll have a more in-depth video on the targeting pod later on. But just know that the targeting pod is now soy and thus all of my HOTAS switches are doing stuff, doing things with this sensor. It's a nice little engine right there. All right. So that covers selecting soy for the MFDs. We do a left or a right long command with the Cooley switch. I mentioned before that the HUD can also be made the sensor of interest or soy. How do we do that? We don't use a long command and this is where it kind of it kind of brain screws you a little bit. We do long commands for left and right, but for the HUD to make it soy, we do coolie forward short. Coolie forward short makes the HUD soy, and we know the HUD is soy since we have that little star. Okay? That's the one difference in terms of changing the sensor of interest between the, uh, the multifunction displays, MFDs, and the HUD. And you will struggle to get a hang of this. It really comes down to just kind of a, I hate to use a, I hate to use the term muscle memory, but it will sort of become muscle memory and it'll also just sort of become intuitive as you work with this. Now, the next concept is going to be sensor points of interest. So let's see here. I'm gonna make the HUD the soy and we're gonna demonstrate this with the HUD. The HUD has a cursor 
called the target designator cursor that can move around. Okay, I'm moving it around with the slew control, as I mentioned before. With the HUD soy, the only way you can do this is with the HUD soy. So I'm moving the target designator cursor, TDC, around with the slew control. Now, I mentioned before we can set a sensor point of interest. What is that? Sensor point of interest, or SPI, is essentially our target. Now, I want you to burn this into, this into your skull. Your sensor point of interest is your target. It is the target it is the target position that's going to get passed on to your weapons and other sensors. You can slave your sensors to that SPI, that target, and it's basically going to be your reference point for everything until you either reset your SPI or you set a new SPI. Hold on one second here. Let me just fix something. I want to... There we go. Okay. So, with regards to the sensor point of interest, let me just set one on the ground here. So on the taxiway right in front of us, I'm going to set a SPI. So the way we set a SPI is we use the target management switch, TMS, and we do TMS forward long. So that is forward, and we press and hold. Okay, now I have set a SPI. It's actually hard to see because we're on the ground here, so it doesn't have the proper angle really. But we have set a SPI we see that the SPI is being provided, if we look down in the lower left corner of the HUD, the current SPI is being provided by the TDC. Okay? And this will change depending on what sensor you've used to create the SPI. You can use pretty much all of your sensors to create a SPI. You can use your TAD, you can use your TDC, you can use your targeting pod most commonly, you can even use the seeker head of a Maverick missile. Your SPI can be a waypoint. And that's pretty much it. You can pretty much use any sensor or any reference point as your SPI. You can even use mark points as your SPI, but I'll touch on mark points in a much later video uh, when we talk about advanced targeting techniques. The point I want to hammer home, though, is your SPI, your sensor point of interest, is your target okay now we can also reset our speed to something else there we go now it's a little easier to see you see since i put it a little further away the tdc is providing the speed and the speed is there and we know it's a speed because we also have a little tadpole tail pointing towards the path vector on our hud Okay, this is important because it also tells you, it'll give you information on the HUD on how to actually turn towards that SPI because when you set a SPI, you generally want to aim your airplane at it because then that's how you deploy your weapons on that SPI. More detail on that sort of thing coming a bit later. We also have a function called slave all sensors to SPI. Now, for this, I need to zoom back out and pause my camera here so if you recall I set a SPI with my TDC we see the TDC in the bottom left corner of the HUD indicating that that's providing the SPI and the SPI is right there there's a function in this airplane called slave all sensors to SPI what does that mean that means I'm going to command a function that's going to command all of my sensors that are active so the active sensors are the ones that are displayed. So I have the TAD page displayed. I have the targeting pod displayed. If I do slave all sensors to SPI, which I believe is going to be a China hat forward long command. So that is going to be China hat forward press and hold. You might have noticed that my targeting pod snapped to that point on the ground it snapped to where my SPI is. So now my targeting pod is now slaved to the SPI. It's not providing the SPI, but it is now slaved to the SPI. And if I move the SPI around, the targeting pod actually follows the SPI. I'm not directly controlling the targeting pod because it's not my sensor of interest. 
I'm moving the speed around because my HUD is the sensor of interest, and the TDC of the HUD is providing the speed. The targeting pod is slaved to that speed. I realize you're probably scratching your head right now. This is the single hardest concept of the A10C to grasp. Sensor of interest, sensor point of interest. It's going to make a lot more sense as I go through, and I'm going to reiterate, you know, creation of spees using sensor of interest as we manipulate the different sensors. Uh, it'll all start to make sense as we start to apply it in practice. But uh, for now, try to digest some of that. Rewatch the video if you need to, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.